So let's dive right in with identities. So we've actually already seen a few different identities. So for example, when I was talking about implication, we saw that P implies Q is logically equivalent to not P or Q right here. And this is our first example of an identity. So an identity is nothing but two logically equivalent compound expressions. It's basically two different ways to say the same thing. We've seen another one, for example, we've seen this one in a previous video. Not P and Q is logically equivalent to not P and not Q. This one right here is actually an example of De Morgan's law. De Morgan's laws are a set of identities that show you how this not operator right here interacts with ands and ors. So this section, and actually all this section right here about identities is contained in 1.3.2. So this section right here contains lots of identities, actually dozens and dozens of different identities, and I'm not gonna go through them all. I basically want to draw your attention to a few important ones. So De Morgan's Laws is one of the most useful ones, and I already said that this is an example of it. So there are two De Morgan's Laws, and they say, this right here. That basically, because we remember from precedence of operators that this not right here has top precedence, it tells you how to have that interact with nots or ands and ors over here. And basically the way that you were to distribute a not into an expression right here, you put that not on each one of the variables and you just flip the and to the or, or the or to the and right here. And it's pretty easy to verify this with a truth table if you wanted to. And in fact, the way that you would prove these identities right here is with a truth table. And then after you have those identities in hand, you never have to go back to a truth table again. So I've already shown you an example of how to prove this using a truth table, and it's pretty straightforward to show that using a truth table as well. So let's go ahead and do that really briefly. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna write ourselves down a truth table. So here we have a truth table for these couple of statements right here, and we can really quickly go through and fill it out. So first off in this first row right here, uh, true and true is true, flip it, it becomes a false. There we go, let's check this one out. Well, that flips it, so it's a false or a false, so that's also a false. On to the next row, okay, a true and a false, well that's gonna be a false, but then we flip it, so it becomes a true right here. And let's see here, this true becomes a false, and that false becomes a true, so it's true or false. Well, that's going to be true as well. This is looking good. This case right here is basically the same, it's symmetrical. Um, so we have false and true. Well, that's gonna be false, but that flips it to be a true. And then again, this is gonna flip it, it's gonna become, that false is gonna become a true, or a false, true or false is also true. And to finish off our proof, we have false and false. That's definitely a false, but the not here flips it. And so we get a true. And then here, well, we get a false. And then it flips it right here, it comes a true, but then it's an or, so I don't, you don't even care about this part right here. So then we get a true. And indeed, what we have is that these couple of columns are exactly the same, therefore these two are logically equivalent. So every single one of the identities that we're gonna cover in this particular section can be proved by using a truth table. And once you've proved it once using a truth table, you never have to go back and use a truth table to derive that again. You just have that identity and then you know it's always going to be 
true.